Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here today. I'm excited to be here. My name is Dennis Calhoun. I am the Senior Customer Solutions Manager for AWS Strategic Account. And you're probably here today because you are a technology executive or technology leader, and you're interested in learning how Prime Video developed, delivers, and operates NFL's Thursday Night Football on AWS. And today is your lucky day because to tell us all about that, we have Manish Rowe, who is the Director of Playback and Delivery Engineering from Prime Video. And joining us is Mega Condi, Senior Manager of Product Management from AWS CloudFront. Thank you. Now, this is a 200 level intermediate session with the intention to show you how Prime Video uses AWS to deliver NFL's Thursday Night Football to millions of fans. So on the agenda today, we will discuss NFL's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. Manish will talk to you about Prime Video's requirements for NFL's Thursday Night Football. He'll also discuss the benefits of using AWS. I'll jump in and talk about Prime Video's media and entertainment solutions for Thursday Night Football on AWS. And then Mega will explore with us AWS CloudFront for NFL's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. But first, before we dive deep into that, I'd like to share with you a football story about my family. How many of you in the audience, show of hands, are NFL football fans? Awesome, awesome. Well, football is, without question, my favorite sport. My father, who unfortunately passed away last year, uh, introduced me and my family to the, the game of NFL football and the San Francisco 49ers. That's right, I'm a 49ers fan. My family is a 49ers fan. Well, with the exception of my mother. She's unfortunately a Green Bay Packers fan. Yeah, don't know how that happened. <laughs> well, my family raised four kids, and with that, they wanted the best life for us, so they worked long, hard hours to ensure that we had a great life. And so family time was scarce, it was very limited, but Sundays was our day to bond. We all watched NFL Thursday, well, NFL football, um, and so, any given Sunday, we would debate about who is the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Joe Montana, Steve Young, Tom Brady. Uh, <laughs> but in so many ways, NFL football became my family's love language. And so that's why I'm excited to be here today, to have the opportunity to pull back the hood and show you how Prime Video delivers NFL's Thursday Night Football to millions of fans. So here are a few facts about Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. September 7th, 2017 was the first NFL game streamed on Prime Video. And in that same year, across 10 games, more than 18 million fans watched NFL's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. And just this year alone, in the very first exclusive Thursday Night Football game, more than 15 million fans watched NFL's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video in just that one game. Did you know that Thursday Night Football is the biggest US event in Prime Video's history. So how many of you have watched the alternative feed Prime Vision during the broadcast? Well, Prime Vision is actually powered by NFL's next-gen stats, which is powered by AWS. So did you know that next-gen stats collects over 300 million data points of in-game play per season? Now, I am going to welcome back to the stage Manish Rowe, and he is going to discuss with you NFL's Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. OK, uh, so I'll start with some background about Prime Video. We're a global entertainment streaming service that offers one of the broadest selection of content to our customers. As a Prime member, you get access to over 40,000 movies and TV shows uh, including Amazon Originals like Rings of Power, or exclusive access to live sports content like Thursday Night Football in the US. We also have a catalog of over 180,000 titles available for uh, purchase or rent. And we offer, we have about 400 uh, channels in our store. So uh, we offer incremental channel subscriptions to content from Paramount Plus, Discovery Plus, MLB TV, and we're the leading OTT store in the industry, channel store in the industry. 
So Prime Video actually started all the way back in 2006, and we were called Amazon Unbox at the time. We had about 1,000 movies available for download in the US, but since then, we've become truly global. We're available in over 240 countries and territories. We stream in over 30 different languages and support over 200 million Prime members worldwide. Our vision is to be the default hub for customers globally, where they go first to watch content and stay for the longest time. And uh, live sports is a key component to achieving this vision. So I'll spend a few minutes on our journey um, as we've evolved our journey through live sports. So we first started streaming live sports back in 2016. And at the time, there were only three events. A late show, a presidential inauguration, Mr. Olympia, all low volume events, audience size in the thousands. But the next year, we actually took a pretty big bet, which ultimately paid off. We signed up to broadcast Thursday Night Football alongside Fox, so non-exclusive. And it was a resounding success. As Dennis mentioned, we had 18 million fans watch the games over the season. So 2017 was a transformational year because that's when Prime Video actually entered the live sports arena. And it's something we've capitalized on ever since. So you can see we've um, expanded at a rapid clip, clip, both geographically and in, in obtaining exclusive sports rights. In 2019, we broadcast Premier League games in the UK, and it was our first time we broadcast the biggest sporting league in a country. And it drove the, one of the highest prime signups in UK's history. And we've done many more prime exclusives since. So we have Roland Garros tennis in France, Champions League in Germany and Italy, uh, cricket in India, uh, Copa soccer in Brazil, of course, TNF in the US, and this year alone, we will have delivered over 10,000 live events worldwide. So big, big improvements since 2016. So uh, next I'll provide a summary uh, of our TNF deal with the NFL. It's an 11-year contract starting in 2022. We broadcast 15 regular season games and one preseason game. And next year, we will actually introduce a uh, Black Friday game into the Rota. This is the first time ever an NFL season has been broadcast on an OTT service. And it actually shows the confidence NFL has um, with the technology and operations of Prime Video. So why TNF? Why is it a unique asset to Amazon? And the answer is, in the US media, there's NFL and there's everything else. NFL just dominates US television. This season alone, NFL games represented 38 of the top 50 TV shows. And over 160 million fans have watched NFL games across networks. NFL also has the highest um, ad monetization rates. So really, no better opportunity for Amazon uh, to capitalize on our technology, uh, our innovation, production, marketing, uh, than to deliver NFL. And of course, innovation. And speaking of innovation, we truly want to revolutionize how our customers consume NFL content, deliver a differentiated, more immersive streaming experience. And we're able to do this because we have glass-to-glass -glass control. And what that means is Prime Video controls everything all the way from the camera in the stadium to the software running on your TVs. So some of the unique capabilities that we've, uh, we've launched this year include uh, Prime Vision, with next-gen stats. Dennis will cover this in more detail. So Prime, Video, Prime Vision delivers a differentiated experience because it uses graphic overlays to track player and ball position, gives different vantage points for plays using multiple camera angles. We also have X-Ray with next-gen stats, also powered by AWS, where you get play-by-play -play stats and you get instant replays without ever having to leave the Prime Video app. Integrated into X-Ray are watch parties and gamification, so you have a fun and interactive experience with your family and friends, so you all watch it at the same time, you can chat. And this year, we delivered five alternate broadcast feeds. So in addition to the main feed with Al Michaels, 
We had one audio feed that was just two women announcers, uh, Andrea Kramer and Hannah Storm, and another one with Dude Perfect to connect with younger demographics. So, you know, good set of capabilities for our first season, and it made a difference. Um, this year's TNF Games on, in, on Prime Video, the average viewer age was seven years younger than corresponding linear broadcast in the season. And we got better ratings in the 18 to 34 demographics, which are key to advertisers. But our innovation is not just with the Prime Video CX. Amazon's power comes from its breadth of services and products that allows us to engage with customers at different touch points. So from Alexa and Fire TV integrations to partnering with Amazon Music to launch concerts after games to our NFL store on the retail website where customers can go uh, favorite their team and purchase personalized merchandise. So uh, watching NFL is beyond just viewing the game. And of course, all of this is powered by AWS. So next I'll actually go into the challenges, some of the technical challenges. As you can see with the graph, scale is critical and live event peaks are substantially higher than VOD peaks. So that's our September 15th game. And these are just not concurrent sessions. You get, uh, you get high peaks even because of customers browsing the storefront or the join rate at which they hit play. So when the game starts, we send push notifications to millions of viewers who may all click play at the exact same time. And you wanna make sure our backend services are scaled so that we can handle all of these requests in parallel so customers can st stream without any delays. And this is not just on the playback stack. You can see all the different functional areas that we had to uh, scale. So for example, uh, our September 15th launch had the highest Prime signups in Amazon's history. Higher than Prime Day, higher than Black Friday, higher than Cyber Monday. And we were ready for it. We scaled our, our signup services, payment systems to meet that demand. And even though you know, the official stats are that we averaged 15 million viewers a game, we were actually scaled for a lot more. And we had built-in buffer because we were scaled in multiple regions and we ensured that we were able to hand withstand a regional service outage. So you wanna do this level of scale and buffer with an event like TNF, because even a blip in availability means a massive customer outage. So the next challenge is delivery. Delivery scales based on the number of concurrent viewers, and you wanna ensure that you have enough cash and network infrastructure that you can deliver the best quality streams to all of these viewers. With an event like TNF, this number really adds up pretty quickly. And TNF was the biggest live event in Prime Video's history. So let's say you have 10, 10 I'm sorry, let's say you have a million uh, customers or 10 million customers viewing the game uh, at any given time. And you wanna deliver them the top 1080p quality bitrate, which is at about 10, 10 megabits per second. So that's about, 100 terabits uh, per second of capacity. And for folks not familiar with the space, that's actually a lot of capacity. And it's not just capacity at AWS, it's capacity at AWS and it propagates to the CDNs and the CDNs infrastructure located in different cities, to the ISP networks, to the last mile all the way to the customer's home. For, so for, C, uh, for TNF, we use six CDNs. And the reason being, a single CDN cannot provide all of the capacity that I just talked about. It's just not available in the market. Uh, CloudFront delivered the highest traffic share, and Megal will cover that in her slides. So once you confirm that CDNs have that capacity, so that's that checkbox next to the CDNs on the bottom right, you wanna then verify that they have the right, they have the capacity into the 1,000 plus ISPs in the US, and the right type of connectivity. Because uh, viewership demand is so localized, you wanna ensure that our CDNs peer with ISPs in the right cities and the right locations. And this is important because you wanna avoid network congestion. Network congestion is the primary reason for video quality degradation. So after you verify that, you know, the CDNs, you check it off, CDNs good, connectivity good, you then work with the ISPs to make sure their internal networks are scaled and there's no congestion inside their network. 
And at, at times you have to work with them to deploy caching infrastructure directly inside their network close to customer's home. So something like deploy a cache in the metro area you're talking about. So you can send one single stream to that caching appliance and then it can fan it out in the last mile. So the next challenge is device landscape. So as OTT streaming has evolved over the last decade, it has also fragmented in terms of the number of streaming formats, DRM technologies, and audio video codecs that are available. And different devices support different combinations of these technologies. So for example, Apple uses a pro streaming protocol called HLS, and it has its own encryption system called Fairplay. But for Android and Fire TV, we use an IEEE standard called MPEG Dash. But when it comes to encryption, we have to decide whether we have to use Microsoft Plurity or Google Widewine because it's de it depends on the underlying device. A device's hardware specification dictates a lot of facets about streaming. What audio, codec, audio video codec can we use or can we deliver a high frame rate? And with NFL content, you want to try and deliver as much in 60 frames per second versus 30 frames per second because there's a lot of motion in NFL, in football. Right? You have the ball going through the air, players running in the field, and you want these transitions to be as smooth as possible, which you get with 60 frames per second, and not so much with 30. But a lot of devices can't keep up. And this, it's the same thing with video codecs. HEVC is a newer codec, a more performant codec, than H.264, but only newer devices support it. So in summary, you have to ensure that your encoding profiles and streaming pro uh, streaming parameters are optimized for all of these different device types. The, and the service that actually does this is Elme AWS Elemental Live and AWS Elemental Media Packager, which Dennis will cover in his slides. The next challenge is ads. So, you know, we have all of these different streaming formats, but they have one thing in common. They deliver video in chunks. In Prime Video, we use two-second chunks. So you can think of each football in the slide as a chunk. And so when you want to do targeted ads, and by targeted ads I mean different cohorts of customers see different types, different ads for the same ad break. So in this example you see customers in cohort A will see an ad for rings of power, whereas in cohort B they will see the boys. And doing this at scale is challenging because you have millions of viewers entering the ad break at the same time. And in real time, you need to figure out what cohort a customer belongs to, dynamically splice in the ad, do it for all the different formats, add all of the ad measurement and ad tracking information, and send it down uh, to the player. And time is of the essence, because if you don't do it quick enough, customers will start seeing a spinner. And the technology that does this is AWS Elemental Media Tailor, which again, Dennis will cover in his slides. The next challenge is latency or delay behind live. So in live sports, you want to be as close to the action in the stadium as possible. And that means if there's a play going on in the field, by the time it actually comes to your phone uh, and you watch it, you want that to be as low as possible because you don't want spoilers from push notifications or social media. And ideally, you want to deliver as close to a broadcast experience as possible so everyone is watching the same thing at the same time. And that, so that you're, if you're watching your stream on your iPhone, it's in sync with what's on the TV. Or if you have multiple camera angles, then all camera angles are synchronized. And it, this also allows us to launch capabilities like watch parties or gamification like sports betting because everyone is behind a fixed delay and everyone was watching the same frame. Doing this with existing technologies and standards that are centered, centered around HTTP is incredibly challenging. And so in 2020, Prime Video decided to acquire this technology, and the technology is called SAI. SAI uses a UDP push-based technology where it pushes video out all the way from the encoder to the customer's device. This is unlike HTTP, which is pull-based, so the players are actually pulling content that's already generated and cached at the CDN edge. But because SAI is proprietary, it actually needs custom software deployed across the delivery chain. And you can see that in, in this figure where you have a, a, a SAI source origin that sits next to the encoder that pushes frames out as soon as they're generated to SAI software running in the AWS cloud, 
which then sends it to Psi nodes running in CDN edges distributed across the US, which then send it to the, sends it to the device. Uh, for TNF, we used Psi with f on four CDNs. Um, the only CloudFront truly natively supports Psi, which means it's transparently available across CloudFront's global infrastructure. Mega will cover this in her slides. We delivered over 50% of TNF streams using Psi technology, and our end-to-end -end latency was under 10 seconds, which is actually better than both cable TV and satellite. It's pretty impressive. The next challenge is availability and resiliency. So as I said, you want 100% uptime. And to achieve the 100% uptime, you need to ensure you have redundancy built in in every stage of your pipeline, all the way from the stadium to customers' homes. So you can, the slide gives a pretty good high-level overview. So you can see the redundancy right at the stadium. You have one signal feed going up via satellite and another one using a fiber connection, so diversity of network types. They go to redundant production facilities where you have graphics, ads, ad markers inserted, and the encoded stream then goes to two AWS regions. So this results in a quad redundant setup. And what this means is if you have a fiber cut at the stadium, then we just switch people, switch all the fans to the satellite feed. Or if you have a direct connect link that, that goes down, or you have a regional service outage in one, U, one AWS region, we can transparently fail over our customers to the other healthy region. And the last challenge is, and the most important one, is customer experience. So what I've talked about so far is all about getting the content to customers, which is that deliver box that you see uh, on the top left. But how do we know customers are actually getting that experience? Are they getting that, be that best quality that I just talked about or the lowest latency? So we really need to be able to measure each and every stream and the way we do that is we instrument our players to send granular metrics. Our players will measure things like available bandwidth, bit rate, first byte and last byte latency, customer interaction events, did they hit play, pause. And all of these events are sent to our backend analytics systems that analyze each stream so that we can actually optimize it. We convert these events into quality of experience KPIs like zero rebuffer rate and zero error rate, which is how many, how many streams did not have a buffer? And then we can actually send it to our optimization systems, one of which is a CDN balancer. So as customers are streaming, a CDN balancer can see, hey, is there a CDN that's having degraded performance in a particular ISP in a particular location, maybe the Southwest US? And then it can fail over customers to a healthy CDN in that same location. Or one of the CDNs may be out of capacity entirely, and so we, the CDN balancer will then block send new sessions from being sent to that CDN. So to summarize, TNF is uh, delivering TNF successfully is a pretty complex undertaking and has a lot of challenges. Uh, scale, delivery, availability and resiliency, device coverage, ads, latency, and finally customer experience. And to talk about how AWS solved all of these challenges, I'm gonna hand it over to Dennis and then Mega. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. You covered and did an awesome job of covering the complexity of Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. Um, now we get to talk about how Prime Video used AWS services to solve for some of those complexities. So when I first started this project, I wondered how many AWS services are being used by Prime Video? and I've counted 60 and growing. Well, this is kind of remarkable to me because the typical customers that I work with in the media entertainment space typically use anywhere between 15 to 20 services for similar type of use cases. Now to make sense of those services that are being used, let's discuss Prime Video's media and entertainment solutions for Thursday Night Football on AWS. Now I've broken this up into two solution areas, the first, direct-to-consumer and streaming, which is Prime Video's ability to deliver the Thursday night football broadcast to millions of fans with dynamically inserted ads. And then the second, data science and analytics, which is Prime Video's ability to leverage NFL's next-gen stats to provide you with the Prime Vision uh, experience that you see during the Thursday night broadcast. The first, direct-to-consumer and streaming for Thursday night football on AWS. 
This is essentially the playback architecture or the playback stack. Now, let's recall some of the things that Manny's talked about. 15 NFL games per season are being streamed to millions of fans. Availability and resiliency is a high priority for Prime Video. Manish mentioned 100% available stream, meaning that the stream should be up 100% of the time. Manish mentioned content delivery, delivering, making, ensuring that the content is being delivered to the millions of fans across six different CDNs, CloudFront being the biggest. MegaConde will actually give us a deep dive on that a little later. And then targeted ads. So to make that a success, Manish mentioned the requirement around HD quality content, meaning Prime Video needed a solution that allows them to, to deliver HD quality content to millions of fans over the internet. Manish also talked about the device landscape and the device playback, Prime Video needing a solution that will allow them to deliver the Thursday night broadcast stream to millions of fans on a multitude of devices. Manish mentioned low latency in distribution which is the ability to capture the, the game on the field in real time and trans, uh, process that content in the cloud and then deliver that out to the millions of fans in under 10 seconds. And then, of course, dynamic ad insertion, insertion which is the ability to insert dynamic ads scalably to millions of fans. So to show you how it's done, you are looking at the Prime Video's Thursday Night Football playback architecture which includes live streaming and ad insertion for Thursday Night Football. So there are three functions at play here. You have your content processing for quality and device playback. You have your dynamically ads, inserted ads. And then you have the ability to deliver that content to millions of fans. Now, there are several services or AWS services used in this architecture, as you can see. Some include Elemental, AWS Elemental Media Tailor, AWS Elemental Live, and AWS Elemental Media Package, which we will cover. So let's talk about the first portion of this architecture. I call this the transcode, transport, and packaging portion of the architecture. There are several functions at play here. Um, so it's the processing of content for quality and device playback, is the transportation of that process content to the cloud, and it is the preparation of that content for internet playback of the live broadcast stream. So let's talk about the first service in this portion of the architecture. AWS Elemental Live is an on-premise transcoding service that allows customers to transcode their live content. And Prime Video uses this service to solve for their quality or internet delivery of HD content requirement. And so how does it work? Well, at the facility that Manish talked about, uh, the game is being transmitted either through fiber or through satellite. And Elemental Media, I'm sorry, Elemental Live receives that live broadcast feed and it starts to process it or transcodes it into various variants. We call that in the industry adaptive bit rate variants, right? And those variants are optimized to be played back on different device types or device sizes. So you have your television screens, you might have computers, you might have your mobile devices. This is the service that, is, that helps optimize the live broadcast reads to be played back on those devices. And so what you get from this portion of the architecture are, is a live broadcast stream that is optimized to be played back on various device sizes. Now, you might be looking at this picture and saying, why are there four arrows coming out of that portion of the architecture? Well, it's representative of, of what Manish talked about when he mentioned availability and resiliency or quad redundancy. So in this case, Prime Video is delivering four independent streams on four separate 10 gig pipes to the cloud. And it's, you know, he's all, they're also delivering it to two different regions and two different availability zones for those regions. So that gives you four independent streams that customers can leverage to play back the content. Now, how is it getting transported to the cloud? AWS Direct Connect is being used. AWS Direct Connect is a service that customers use to transport their on-premise data from the on-premise location to the AWS cloud. And in this case, Prime Video is transporting that live transcoded content from the on-premise location to their AWS cloud. And there, 
AWS Elemental Media Package ingests those four individual streams. So, what is AWS Elemental Media Package? Well, Elemental Media Package is a service that allows customers to protect their content and prepare it for internet delivery. And in this case, Prime Video is using it to solve for its device landscape uh, requirements and other things. And so we'll, we'll walk through how it actually works. So, Media Package receives the live processed content that has been processed or optimized for quality playback, and it creates what we call a manifest. Now, a manifest file is essentially a set of instructions to tell the downstream services and clients how to play back the content, right? And then it creates, uh, it prepares the, the content for dynamic ad insertion by, by examining the video stream and is looking for ad markers that were actually placed into the video stream prior to encoding at the facilities. And so when it identifies those ad markers, it marks the playlist with ad marks to tell the downstream services when and where to insert the dynamic ads. It also protects the content with DRM, or digital rights management, with several different technologies. Manish mentioned Google Widevine, Microsoft Parity. And then it processes the content so that it can be played back on a multitude of devices. Manish mentioned the different streaming technologies or protocols, HLS for Android, I'm sorry, HLS for Apple, uh, MPEG Dash for Android, and Microsoft Smooth Streaming for Microsoft devices. So what you get from this portion of the architecture is you have four independent streams that is optimized for uh, quality playback on various device sizes that can be played back on a multitude of devices that is protected with DRM and that is prepared for dynamic ad insertion. Now, let's talk about the second portion of the architecture. I like to call this the ad insertion portion. There are several functions at play here, uh, one of which includes the pre-processing of the VOD, the VOD ads that are submitted to Prime Video prior to the game by their ad partners. Right? And so then this, the second thing is the processing uh, or the dynamic ad insertion of those ads to the stream, and then also the stitching of those ads for, uh, for seamless playback. So if we look at the first service here, so again, prior to the game, or well, let me tell you actually what Media Tailor is before I jump into the flow of this. But So Elemental Media Tailor is a channel assembly and personalized ad insertion service that allows customers to do just that. And Prime Video actually uses this service to solve for their ad insertion requirements. And so if we look at how this actually works, prior to the game, uh, Elemental, or I'm sorry, Prime Video submits the DAI ads to the Elemental Media Tailor service. And the underlying service that Elemental Media Tailor uses to transcode those file-based ads is called Elemental Media Convert, which, a, which is a file-based transcoding uh, service. Now, those ads are pretty much processed and ready for insertion. So when the game actually starts, the live feed comes into Elemental Media Tailor. It examines the manifest file that was created earlier and marked for ad insertions. And in the portion of where the ads are to be inserted, Elemental Media Tailor actually inserts those ads and stitches them together for seamless playback. Now, additionally, Elemental Media Tailor has the ability to report back to Prime Video uh, the ad placements, the type of ads that are being placed, and the type of clients that are playing back these, uh, those ads. Now, <clears throat> the result of this portion of the architecture is you have four independent streams that is now optimized to be played back on various device sizes and multiple, a multitude of devices, and now you have a live broadcast stream with dynamically inserted ads. And that stream is now available to Amazon or AWS CloudFront, which Mega will discuss a little later, all of this is happening in under 10 seconds. Now, we need to take a breath, because we just covered a lot. So, I have a brain teaser. Earlier on, I gave you a few facts about Thursday Night Football on Prime Video, so I have a question for you. In 2022, how many fans watched the first regular season Thursday Night Football game on Prime Video? Is it A, 15 million? Okay, is it B, 13 million? Okay. Is it C, 18 million? The answer is A, 15 million. In one game, 15 million fans. Now, let's discuss the last solution area here, which is 
Prime Video's data science and analytics for Thursday Night Football on AWS. So what is that? So the Prime Vision feed that we spoke of earlier, this is the alternative feed. So Prime Video created the Prime Vision feed that leverages NFL's next-gen stats and enhances the fans' experience. And so to make that a success, Prime Video leverages the next-gen stats API to create this experience. So underneath that API, uh, in, uh, NFL next-gen stats is ingesting live data of in-game play, and then it's processing that data and making patterns and predictions using the ML services at AWS. So this is the actual Prime Vision feed. And Bears go no huddle. Pick up the this pace here. Is Fields. The Deep coolest thing in serious sports right now. Um, this is my favorite feed. I watch this feed. As you can see, there's bubbles under the player's feet as they run up the field to show you how fast they're running. And on the side of the screen, you have all of the different stats, the passing stats from the quarterback, the rushing and receiving stats from the receiver and the, and the runner. To me, this is the coolest thing. In fact, when I watch Thursday Night Football, this is what I watch, and this is what I'll be watching tonight when I watch the broadcast. So, how is this actually accomplished? Well, you're looking at the services that NextGen Stats uses for Prime Video to leverage, right? So there are three independent things that are happening here. You have the processing of real-time data. You have the machine learning or, or the model that were created to make sense of that data. And then you have the APIs that are created so that Prime Vision can, or Prime Video can create the Prime Vision experience. And there are several services used in this architecture. Amazon SageMaker, uh, Amazon EC2, and Amazon EMR. The first portion of this, the data processing and analysis, in this portion, Prime, I'm sorry, NextGen Stats, or NFL's NextGen Stats, is using Amazon Elastic Com Compute Cloud, which is Amazon EC2, to ingest the live data as it happens, and then is using Amazon EMR to process that data to clean it up and prepare it for machine learning. And then it sends that data over to the machine learning process, which is Amazon SageMaker, which is a service um, used, for, or used by customers to build and create machine, machine learning models. And in this case, NFL's NextGen Stats created their own proprietary machine learning models to make sense of the data that they are receiving on, from on-field. And it creates the patterns and predictions. And it creates a robust set of APIs for Prime Vision or Prime Video to leverage for their Prime Vision experience. The NFL also uses Amazon uh, QuickSight to make sense of that data to ensure that it's accurate and to improve it. Now, I'm going to bring to the stage Mega Kandi, and she is going to discuss AWS CloudFront for NFL Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. Thank you, Dennis. Good afternoon, all. Amazon CloudFront has been a constant partner to Prime Video in presenting large-scale events like the Thursday Night Football. What differentiates an event like Thursday Night Football is the sheer scale. As Manish and Dennis called out, Prime Video Thursday Night Football this season was watched by over 15 million viewers in a three-hour broadcast session. By comparison, the Super Bowl 16, which was broadcast in, uh, which was which was streamed in uh, February of 2022, was watched by about 11.2 million viewers. Delivering Thursday Night Football is like streaming a Super Bowl every single week. The scale is massive. What differentiates CloudFront in delivering an event like the Thursday Night Football? is the quality of service we bring to the live events. The quality, quality of service uh, for CloudFront across the games in Thursday Night Football has been the best. And we measure this using four key metrics. The first one is the bit rate. The bit rate is the average, time-weighted average bit rate that we deliver to different viewers and devices. When the bit rate deteriorates, it's usually because your network is congested um, you see a lagged and grainy picture. The second important metric is percentage of high-definition streams delivered. 
This is to uh, the, the number of times we are actually able to deliver high def streams to devices that are capable of 1080p or 7, 720p resolution streaming. Now, if the network quality is not there, we cannot deliver the, the, the bits at that resolution. Third is the zero rebuffering rate. Rebuffering is that annoying circle you see on the screen when your player is not able to fetch the bytes fast enough. And we want to minimize that for our viewers. The fourth is the time to first byte or the first byte latency. That is the time it takes from the time you click play on your device for, to the time the video actually starts playing. CloudFront is not just the best as measured by these metrics, but game over game, we have improved the quality of service for Thursday Night Football. What you see here is how the percentage of high definition streams delivered has improved, and thereby, we have increased the share of sessions of Thursday Night Football that have been delivered using CloudFront. So what are, let's quickly recap the challenges uh, in delivering and even the scale of Thursday night football with high quality of service. There are three that I would cover. The first is delivery of high, high number of uh, bits in terabits per second is like driving a very large and very fast convoy over a congested highway. You cannot do this, it's physically impossible unless you have carefully planned alternate network paths that have lower congestion, and you have strategically identified places where you can have caches close to the end viewers. The second is the customer experience. Manish talked about SAI and how it brings interactive low latency experiences to the end viewers. SAI is completely different than HTTP. It is a push-based technology um, delivered using UDP. Traditionally, for streaming, CloudFront has used HTTP over TCP. So to, to, to deliver SAI, to build SAI, we had to make some big architectural changes. Third is the 100% availability and resiliency. And this becomes super critical um, when we have an event which, is, which has super high peaks, large peaks that ramp up fast. Today, I will cover how the core capabilities of CloudFront set us up to overcome these challenges, and I will also talk about how we prepared for the Thursday night football. It all starts with the AWS network infrastructure. The AWS backbone and the caches that CloudFront has take the bytes off of the public internet. CloudFront has 450 edge locations that are distributed across nine, over 90 cities in 48 different countries. These edge locations or edge points of presence, as we call them, um, POPs is something that I'll use frequently in my, um, in my talk today. These are data centers that house the, server, uh, the caching servers for CloudFront. Now, these first layer of cache servers is backed by a second layer of regional mid-tier caches that are available in 13 different AWS regions across the globe. Connecting these caches is the fully redundant high-speed backbone, AWS backbone, over which the bytes are transmitted. So what does this mean um, for Thursday night football delivery? Now let's imagine that there is a Packers game that is going on in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And you are a Packers fan, or you are watching the game with a Packers fan like Dennis's mom um, from Seattle. Now, the, the path that your bytes would take would, would look something like this. Um, when, you, when you click the play button on your device, the request would go to a CloudFront pop in Seattle. That would, that would 96% of times, have the bytes cached right there to serve. If it does not have the bytes, the request is then, uh, then routed to a mid-tier cache in San Francisco, and only if that is not there does the request go all the way to US East, where uh, the bytes are stored in an S3 origin. Between the CloudFront caches, 
the mid-tier and the edge caches. We have over 99% of bytes cached close to the end, end viewers, which means of 100 fans watching the game in Seattle, there is one request that makes all the way back to US East. Now, when the bytes do have to leave the AWS network, we have high quality peering links with ISPs all across the US. As Manish called out in his presentation, um, these last mile peering links are critical to make sure that we have high quality experience for the viewers. And, um, and this is a primary area of focus for AWS, 92% of the bytes don't traverse the public internet today. This is how we take the large convoy of bytes off public internet. Now, speaking of that last mile, the, the connectivity from Seattle to, let's say you are, you're not in Seattle, you're watching the game from Fargo, North Dakota. That last mile in a lot of small US cities get, is, is low bandwidth pipes that get congested during an event like the Thursday night football. This year, CloudFront launched the second generation of the embedded pops that brings CloudFront caching closer to the viewers in smaller cities. This year, for the Thursday night football, we have deployed over 200 embedded pops in 50 city, cities across the US. So what are these embedded pops? Embedded pops are um, small compact appliances. These are single unit appliances that can be deployed in ISP facilities, smaller facilities in smaller cities closer to the end viewers. These appliances are built to, uh, to be power efficient. They run on 650 watts um, of power and they are capable of delivering today 100 Gbps per kilowatt. They have large cache width, which means that once the event is over, the viewers can benefit uh, by high quality uh, video on demand delivery through these devices. And then finally, these devices have very high throughput. A single device is capable of, um, of delivering seven times the, uh, the bytes as compared to a server on a CloudFront um, edge pop. So what, has been, what, so what we have observed with these appliances in cities like Fargo, North Dakota, is that we have seen 20% reduction in first byte latency when bytes are delivered using these devices. Speaking of preparing for the Thursday night football, we have added internet capacity across all of these layers that I just talked about to deliver the event. We have doubled the internet capacity in US in the last 18 months. And I will talk about internet capacity in terms of terabits per second. So the, it first starts with the connectivity from the AWS network to your viewers through, um, through the links that we, that we contract with the ISPs. We have deployed over 90 TBPS of links in this layer, 82 TBPS of which are direct high quality peering links with 1000 plus ISPs across the US. Second is the caching layer. We have doubled the number of pops that we have in the US. We have deployed embedded pops that I just talked about and we have brought CloudFront caching to four times the number of cities in the US for Thursday night football. Connecting the caching layers with the external internet is, the, is, is a fabric of routers and servers which we call the AWS border. To this border, we added 19 TBPS of new optical capacity and, over, and close to 77 TBPS of new routing ports. And finally, connecting our edge pops to the regions is the AWS backbone that I talked about. And to the backbone, we added over 16 terabits per second of new capacity. All of this required a lot of coordination across AWS with our network partners, the internet service providers, and the co-location providers. If there was one link that was missed, that would have resulted in a poor experience for the users, and we continue to improve on this. 
Now let's talk about the customer experience. CloudFront delivers Sai through Sai um, a 10 second, less than 10 second of glass to glass latency to over 50% of streams um, that, are, uh, that are delivered using CloudFront. CloudFront is the only, only CDN that can run HTTP and Sai side by side today. Let's, let's break that down. How is that done? So as you know, CloudFront data plane, uh, many of you may know, has two primary functions, routing and caching. For HTTP delivery, and like, you know, um, even, even with Sai, we use HTTP um, to deliver ads for, uh, for playback. So for HTTP delivery, a, a user request comes to the CloudFront DNS servers that then talk to the capacity and routing management systems that are able to look at the load across all of the CloudFront pops and direct the request to the right CloudFront pop. A CloudFront pop is a collection of servers, hosts, that are running the HTTP caching stack for CloudFront. One of these hosts then takes the request and sends the bytes back to the user. When we had to build Sai, we used the same principles as HTTP, but we, but we developed new services so which we can spin up just before the event and spin down when the event is over so that we could use the capacity on the pops effectively. So for Sai, we have two containerized services, the Sai fanout and the Sai egress um, that run on every individual host in CloudFront. The Sai fanout service receives that single stream, push stream um, from, uh, from the Sai uh, control plane, and then it fans it out to different egress pitchers or containers within the pop. And when a user, when a viewer clicks the play button on their appliance, uh, on their device, and it reaches the site traffic service, site traffic service is talking to the same capacity and routing management system, which is now aware of both HTTP and SI load on the different pops, and is able to route the request to the egress picture that can serve it with the highest performance. So in this way, um, we have extended our capacity management systems to be SI aware, and we have introduced resource management at the, at the host level to orchestrate resources between SI and HTTP. We, we can now deploy SI. We, we now have SI actually deployed um, on all of our global fleet across the world, and that, that's why we say that SI on CloudFront is truly built to scale. Now let's look at um, the 100% the availability and resiliency um, that Manish talked about. The largest challenge that we have with, a, with an event like Thursday Night, Night Football is that we see a steep on-ramp of traffic before the halftime. And this, the peak traffic that we see is many multiples of the peak that we see on a normal day. Over the years, CloudFront has built a very responsive capacity management system that, that can handle this steep ramp of traffic. Firstly, the capacity management system can very quickly, in a matter of few minutes, detect that, hey, this, the, the oncoming ramp of traffic is way higher, and it starts to distribute the load over a wider set of pops um, in, in, uh, within CloudFront. Secondly, the capacity management system is able to manage capacity at, the, at, at a pop level. So when a pop starts to get overloaded, if Seattle is getting overloaded, it can methodically back up the traffic from, uh, from the pop, and it also looks at the, the capacity within a single server and the load within a single server. So if a host is getting overloaded, we are able to control the request rate that is sent to the host. These are especially important when there is a flash crowd, when, when, the, when, the, when the slope of that, uh, on that graph is steeper and suddenly you have a lot of users coming in, um, the capacity management at the server and the pop level are what help us. Secondly, uh, what, uh, the, the CloudFront routing system itself, as you know, um, it, can, it can identify the pop that can deliver the bytes with the highest performance. In addition to that, 
It is also aware of the link quality. So it gives preference to direct peering links that we have with the ISPs so that we can deliver the bytes with that high quality. Finally, CloudFront is natively integrated with AWS security services, the AWS WAF and AWS Shield. And these services help mitigate bot attacks as well as provide layer seven DDoS protection, which are all very common when you have an event like Thursday night football going on. But issues do happen when, when you have an event the scale of uh, Thursday night football, issues do happen and this year, Prime Video, AWS Elemental, and CloudFront work with AWS Elemental Media Event Management Services, MEM, to provide hands-on support during the event. MEM is a team of specialized video streaming professionals who provide pre-event readiness checks. During the event, they provide monitoring and support for issues, and post-event, they help look back and analyze what could have been improved. For Thursday Night Football, the MEM engagement started nine months in advance. In January, the teams were sitting together and talking about the design, the workflows, the different failure modes, and the mitigation steps. Then we ran a series of tests or dry runs, if you may, with smaller scale events where we had dashboards created and, and right alarming levels um, set up to see like, if any failures happen, how can, we, how can we prepare and how can we work around those failures? And then finally, during Thursday Night Football, the team has been, the MEM team has been providing eyes on glass support for identifying issues and miti mitigating them quickly. Once the season is over, we are going to get together with MEM Prime Video team and AWS Elemental to look back at what were our learning opportunities and how could we improve this going into the next season. So that, that was a lot. And you know, in summary, all, uh, what, what I want to say is that delivering an event, the scale of Thursday Night Football requires constant innovation. This year, we have been able to work with Prime Video to bring immersive interactive experiences via SAI. We've been able to work with our internet service provider partners to bring CloudFront ed edge caching closer to their viewers. In the coming years, in the next season, we are excited to continue innovating on this front. And with that, I'll hand it over to Dennis. Thanks. Wow, thank you, Mega. Thank you, Manish. We covered such a great deal of information in such a short time. We talked about Thursday Night Football on Prime Video. We talked about the challenges and the complexity, the benefits of using AWS. We talked about the media and entertainment solutions that Prime Video built uh, on AWS. And then Mega gave us a great overview of AWS CloudFront. We hope that this inspires you to build your next Think Big idea on AWS. And thank you all for coming today. If you want to reach out to us, here are our email addresses. We'll be in the halls of reInvent with you all as well. So if you have, have questions, please stop and uh, ask questions. And also, please don't forget to fill out the survey. Thank you.